wanted to film a quick reading update. Um, this is the, well, I was gonna say it's Monday, but it's July 5th. It's the first working day. It was July 4th yesterday, so thankfully I had the day off. I did not read. I was hoping to read. Yeah, it was not a good reading weekend, but we're kicking off the work week. Um, on the right foot, I would say. I am currently listening to Shakespeare's Secret by Elise Roach, which if you saw my Summer Splash TBR video, which I will try to link somewhere above, um, that is one of my picks for the readathon. It is for the Roots category. It's one of my absolute favorite childhood books. I have reread it the last two years. I'm very excited to reread it again. I have absolutely no shame. I'm just coming back from my lunch break and before I dive back into work, I thought I would just kind of give you an update. I think I am maybe like a third of the way through the audiobook. It's very short. It's like five and a half hours maybe. So it's the perfect work audiobook. I might even finish it before I even get home. So I will give you an update when I get back into the car or when I end up back at the house, but I thought I would, I would just let you know I'm enjoying it so much. It really holds up. It's such an amazing middle grade. So, so good. I'm trying to conserve time because I have very little time left on my lunch break, so I'll give you more of a rundown on the story when I get home. All right, I am back home, and in case you are new, I've shown this area of my house before, but this is where my computer is. This is where I do a lot of my schoolwork. This is also where I edit my videos. I thought I would just check in, tell you a little bit about Shakespeare's Secret by Elise Broach because it lived up to my memory. It does every time. I'll tell you a couple reasons why. The first reason is just, it's very nostalgic. I bought my copy at the Scholastic Book Fair. Actually, maybe I can go get the copy and show it to you. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I have my copy here. It is this, I got it at the Scholastic Book Fair when I, I don't even know how old I was. I might've been in like fourth or fifth grade. But look, ugh, it just reminds me of childhood. I love it so much. On this particular reread, I did not read any of the physical book, which is kind of sad. I had meant to bring this with me to work. I forgot it on my desk before I left for work this morning, which is really sad. I wanted to read along at lunchtime just to have like some of the experience of reading the pages, but it didn't happen. That's okay. I still enjoyed it so much. Just to give you a little bit of a rundown of the story of the book, no spoilers, I won't spoil anything for you in case you're interested. All right, sorry, my husband got home from work and I wanted to say hello, but here's the blurb on the back. When Hero starts sixth grade at a new school, she's less concerned about the literary or origins of her Shakespearean name than about t the teasing she's sure to suffer because of it. So she has the same name as a girl in a play by a dusty old author. Hero is simply not interested in the connections. But that's just the thing. Suddenly, connections are cropping up all over. There's a million dollar diamond hidden in her new house, or so she's told. A curious woman next door who seems to know an awful lot about it. And then, well, there's Shakespeare. So the other part of this story that's really interesting that isn't discussed on the back, and it's actually kind of surprising for a middle grade, is that it's it's about this mystery. They're trying to find this diamond, but the way that it is connected to Shakespeare, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil it, that's a bit of a twist uh, at some point in the novel, but it's connected to the lore you hear about sometimes where it's like, was Shakespeare really Shakespeare? Was he somebody else who just used Shakespeare as a front or like a pen name or something? 
So one of the people who they think could have been the person writing the Shakespeare plays is Edward de Vere, and they talk a little bit about that in the book, which is really interesting because for a middle grade, she's not talking down to the reader, even though it's a younger audience. And that's something I really appreciate and something I'm noting. I'm hoping to someday write a middle grade novel. I'm kind of working on one right now. So I like reading middle grades just to see like how it's handled, what's done well, what doesn't read as well. So taking notes because I feel like this book is just excellent. I love it. I'm so glad I read it. And this is the first thing that I finished for the Summer Splash Readathon. Tonight I do want to get some more reading in. I have a little bit more reading to go, maybe two or three hours for Anne of Green Gables. I am going to be updating Instagram with this first category finished. This was Roots. Um, maybe I'll count it towards something else, but maybe I'll just start counting one title for each category on the bingo board. So that's the first one down. I completely forgot to put this on my calendar, but I saw the notification come up that Summer Splash is doing a, um, a reading sprint on their Instagram and I'm going to take part in it. I think this qualifies for something on the bingo board, so it's too... <laughs> two things in one. I get to fill out something on my bingo board and I get to read a little bit, which is going to be really nice before I start cooking for dinner and whatnot. So I'm going to be filming myself reading on my iPad and I'm going to be reading. I haven't decided yet. It's probably just going to be Anne of Green Gables, but I'm going to shut this off so I can tune in on my phone on Instagram and I'll see you very shortly on the iPad. has been a few days since I've updated you, but I do have some reading updates. Um, gosh, I have, I have a lot of updates to share. The first of which I'm chugging along with my Summer Splash Readathon TBR. The last book that I think I updated you on was Shakespeare's Secret, which was way earlier in the week. It is Friday now. I totally slacked on my reading this week. So first off, of course, like I said before, finished Shakespeare's Secret that is on the bingo board currently. Next up, I started listening to Red, White, and Royal Blue at Work. I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm about halfway, I think I'm actually more than halfway through the audiobook. However, I realized while I was listening to this at work, I think this is the sort of book I want to spend more time with. I think that typically I can listen to romances like Emily Henry and things like that. I can listen to it at work and be able to really enjoy the story, but I feel like I want to concentrate a little bit more on this. I don't want to give you any spoilers, so I'll try to be as vague as possible, but where I am in the story, I feel like there's a big problem coming with like, okay. Maybe I'll put like a picture of the book on the screen and if you don't want any spoilers at all, I won't like say exactly, but if you don't want any spoilers at all, skip to where you don't see the picture of the book, okay? So I feel like like the characters are going to get hacked because like they're exchanging emails and they're like sexy emails. This is a very spicy book. <laughs> there are a lot of sexy sexy scenes in this. If you've read it, you know it and it's a lot of fun, but I just, I'm cringing so hard for these characters because I can feel it coming. And if it doesn't happen, I'll feel pretty foolish, but I just feel it coming. Cause it like, they, it was even mentioned when the main character, which one was it? I've been reading too many books, Alex. When Alex is talking about emailing Henry, and there's explicit stuff in the emails. He's like, I know I should be thinking more about public servers, blah, blah, blah. 
and I'm like, dude, you're gonna get hacked, and we're gonna have like a full-on scandal up in here. That's like, I can just smell it. I feel like it's coming. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd be happy to be wrong, because I'm just cringing so hard. It's like, oh, I don't know if I want there to be a scandal. I like the characters. I don't want them to go through that if that makes any sense at all. I feel like I didn't even mention what this book is about for people who don't know, because this book is everywhere. I feel like everybody has read this book. I think I am the last person on earth to be reading this in 2022. But just in case you're in that camp with me, this book is a love story. Basically, it is a romance about the Prince of England and like the first son of America. Alex is the American, Henry is the Brit. It is basically their love story. Basically, it is their love story. It is an, an enemies to lovers story. It's just, it's a romp, it's funny, it has a lot of hilarious scenes. I'm enjoying this a lot, but I want to spend more time with this. I don't want to just like rip through it and listen to it at work. I actually want to like soak it in, you know? But I feel like I've talked about this one enough. I have other updates. The next book that I have been listening to, it is If Cats Disappeared from the World. It is a very, very short novel. Um, the reason why I picked this, this has been on my TBR for a while. It was not mentioned when I was building my Summer Splash TBR. Like I said in that video, I am a mood reader. I like kind of just like going on a whim and picking books just for the heck of it. It is a very short translated novel by a Japanese author, so it could qualify for a lot of categories in the Summer Splash Readathon bingo board. It is basically, it is a really interesting concept. I had a somewhat similar issue with this book as I did with Red, White, and Royal Blue, is when I was listening to it at work, I began to care too much for it to just be a work audiobook, so I had to hit pause, and I'm gonna continue on with it tonight, because I only have like an hour left on the audiobook. It's basically like a five-hour audiobook. It is very, very, very short. I think it might technically be classified as a novella. I'm not 100% sure, but the basic concept of this book is an exploration of what would you do if you had X amount of time to live? So the narrator, I don't think we actually get his name. We don't know who the narrator is other than the fact that he is a postman. We don't get a lot of other details about his life right off the bat. We know right at the very beginning of the novel, he is, is diagnosed with terminal cancer. His doctor tells him you'll be lucky if you have a week to live. He has a brain tumor. It's very, very serious, and the devil shows up and makes a deal with him and says, you can get one extra day of life if you choose one thing to eliminate from the world, which that's how it's kind of explained, but it's actually kind of misleading because he, the main character, doesn't get to choose. The devil gets to choose what is eliminated and it's like painful what he chooses of course because it's things that are really meaningful to the character the main character so at first it's like phones movies i mean the title is the biggest spoiler it's like he has to give up his cat but his cat is really precious to him that's not a big spoiler because it's in the title but it's like a really interesting exploration of like is it selfish to trade something that you have to take away from the whole world for one day of life just for you like it's really interesting that there were a lot of quotes that were really hitting me and there was one and it kind of like talks about regret and there was one quote where I was just like man it really hit me. It, it's, I must have a whole collection of small injuries tucked away somewhere in the recesses of my memory. I suppose those are what some people call regrets. It's a short book, but it's really packing a punch. I was working and I'm listening while I'm processing stuff in the archive and I'm just like finding myself tearing up 
And I'm like, I need to stop this because I need to fully soak this in. I like went back because I'm listening to this on Scribd. Scribd has both the audiobook and the ebook and Scribd allows you to highlight and make notes. And when I came home from work, did all sorts of highlighting because I just had so many lines that just stuck in my head where I was like, I need to remember this. So after I finish this tonight, the way I'm gonna finish this audiobook is I'm going to listen along and I'm gonna highlight as the mood strikes and I'm going to write it in my book journal. This is where I'm gonna record all of my like notes and things. I already have like a little shelf here that I record all the titles that I've been reading so far this year and I'm gonna carry on over here in this little printout from Morgan Long as well from her Patreon. And I'm filling this up super quickly but it's also where I am writing down notes for the books I'm reading as well. So I'm excited to start doing that but I've been talking forever so I'm just gonna read and I'll update you in a little bit. <laughs> and welcome to disaster. So I checked my phone where I film and the last time I filmed was on Friday and it is currently Tuesday. I went a whole weekend without filming. I barely read it all. My excuse is that I was cleaning basically the whole weekend. I've been cleaning. I, I cleaned yesterday. We have um, family that are coming to stay with us tomorrow actually and as you can see kind of behind me because I'm blocking with my back I have to clean more for our impending visitors and uh, <laughs> my body hurts and I don't want to do it anymore <laughs> I still have to finish red white and royal blue just a general reaction to If Cats Disappeared from the World. Is that even the title? Oh my god, that's the title. I thought I would try to do both those things, try to finish Red, White, and Royal Blue tonight, possibly while I'm cleaning, because I need something to keep my brain occupied, otherwise I'll go bananas while I clean. So I'm gonna try to do that, but I also wanted to give you my general reaction of If Cats Disappeared from the World which, oh my goodness, I think the reason why I didn't film my reaction immediately after that book was because I needed to emotionally process it. First, the ending, I won't give away, but was kind of surprising and did kind of leave things hanging a little bit. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was really good. I liked it a lot. I, what did I even rate it? Did I give it four stars? Yes, I gave it four stars. Sorry, I'm looking at my Goodreads right now. And overall, I would recommend it. I went into it kind of expecting a little bit more of a lighthearted read. For some reason, going into it, I was almost expecting it to be like the cat who saved books. I can't tell you why I thought that, but that's just what I was expecting and The Cat Who Saved Books was a pretty lighthearted book, was a little bit of a romp. This was not very lighthearted. This was kind of sad, really hit you in the pathos pretty hard, but I would recommend it. I found myself at just annotating in Scribd. I don't even have the physical version of this book, but I just my I had never done this with any Scribd ebook before, but I found myself just highlighting so much after the fact. I would recommend it, but just go in knowing that it's pretty much about death. It is a lot of death talk, so if you're already in a fragile emotional state, I wouldn't recommend it, but 
yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. Lots of poignant parts, lots of things I'm going to be mulling over. It's definitely one of those books that I'm not going to forget soon, which I think is always the mark of a good book. I think the last time I filmed was yesterday or the day before. I literally don't even remember. I've had family coming and visiting. My uncle from California is here, so I haven't had an awful lot of time to film or read, but I have a little bit of a break tonight. I kind of have the house to myself, and so I was taking a look at Instagram, and I saw that Summer Splash had posted earlier this week that the Instagram challenge for the week is making a beverage or a meal based off of a book you've read so far or the book you're reading currently for the readathon. So I had an idea. I thought, inspired by Anne of Green Gables, I would make some meadow tea, which is one of my favorite things to make. It's literally just iced mint tea with a lot of sugar. <laughs> It tastes amazing. It's one of my favorite things to make in the summertime just because I have a whole lot of mint to use up in my garden. So I'm going to go clip some mint right now. It's dark out so I won't show you the process. I just go and hack off a whole lot of mint because mint grows like a weed which is kind of a beautiful thing because you need a lot of leaves to make this tea. And I like to brew it overnight. So this is the perfect time, perfect timing. I was like struck with inspiration. I was like, I can make meadow tea, this is amazing. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll show you the process and then I'll show you in the morning what I do to finish it off. Okay, so I'm watching the live stream with Sally and Sierra right now. So if you hear voices in the background, that's why. But I hacked off a whole lot of mint I'm going to strip the leaves off, put them in here or in my colander, whatever I'm gonna wash it in, and then I'll show you what's next. water. I have it all in there with the mint. I'm going to leave it overnight to brew and then I'll come back in the morning and show you what I do, how I strain it, how much sugar I put in there. So yeah, I will see you in the morning. Welcome back. It's the next day. The tea has brewed overnight. I just whammed my hand against the top and I apologize for the noise outside. I'm sure you can hear it. My neighbors are cutting down a tree so I'm working with what I got really quickly. What I am going to do is I'm going to strain out all the tea leaves or the mint leaves in this case out of this. I'm going to fish them out with this. This is for a salad but it works for fishing out mint leaves and then I'll just show you the whole process as I go along and I'm going to watch Gilmore Girls while I do this. tail end I'll give you a final look at the meadow tea but I'm glad I finally got to show you my process it's not exacting by any means but I like making it it's very refreshing it's perfect for this time of year but I wanted to give you my final thoughts on red white and royal blue and before the coffee gets cold tales at the cafe I'm pretty sure it gave both four stars and I'll give you my thoughts on red, white, and royal blue real quick. I really enjoyed it. I feel like listening to it entirely on audiobook wasn't exactly the move. I think I would have enjoyed it 
a lot more, maybe even given it five stars if I had just read it, but it was still a lot of fun. I really liked the audiobook. The narrator was really good. He did like the different voices and the different accents and everything, so it was still enjoyable, but regardless, it was so good. It was so heartwarming. That reality of that America in red, white, red, white and royal blue is the America I want to live in. I would definitely recommend it as like a fun book to just read if you need a pick-me-up or you have like a long car ride or something. Oh. Hey, it's raining! <laughs> A little bit of a mental breakdown earlier and I think some outdoor time is in order so I'm gonna go drive to my favorite park I'm bringing spy family with me because that's what you saw me reading yesterday when I went to the ball game with my family and that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna drive I'm gonna listen to Taylor Swift probably we're gonna have fun let's go let's go I brought tea with me we're gonna get snacks it's gonna be awesome I would wrap this vlog up here. I'm about to head back home after sitting outside and reading for an hour or so. It was very nice. I had a lot of fun, but I realized I never finished telling you about Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales at the Cafe, which is the second Before the Coffee Gets Cold book. I think I said what I wanted to say about Red, White, and Royal Blue yesterday. Very heartwarming. I really enjoyed it. Loved it super super fun sorry i got interrupted my uncle had been out and he came back and then we went out and played tennis together it was a whole thing so but i'll tell you about the second um before the coffee gets cold now i really enjoyed that too that was another audiobook i didn't love the narrator of that audiobook but i still enjoyed it it was very much like the first book same sort of stories where if you don't know about Before the Coffee Gets Cold, basically there is this coffee shop in Japan in this book where there's a very specific set of rules, but if you adhere to them, you can go back in time. So it's very interesting, especially with the rules, it kind of plays with like, why would you wanna go back in time? Who would you meet if you couldn't change what happens in the past or you could only be there for a very short period of time, etc, etc. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I also wanted to share, it looks like there's a third book coming out. I saw on Amazon yesterday <laughs> that there's a pre-order for a third book that I think is coming out in October or November. If you are like me and you really like those books, super exciting. I cannot wait for them to come out. I think, what did I say before the coffee gets cold counted for? I think I put that down as easy breezy on the bingo board. Red, white, and royal blue counted as sand castles, which is a book that is, that has royalty in it. So those are two um, squares down on the bingo board. And I'm also working my way through Spy Family, as you saw. I'm not quite sure what this will qualify for on the bingo board, but I'm trying to read this entirely outside for the touch grass category. So I love this so much. Spy Family is so much fun. And it was a lot of fun to read at the ball game yesterday too, because I love going with my family, but I'm not a huge sports girl. I typically bring a book whenever I go to go see a, um, a baseball game. Slowly working my way through, 
but I thought I'd just give you guys the rundown. Thank you for joining me on this outing. Thank you for watching this vlog. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next reading vlog. I'm probably going to be starting tomorrow. All right, thanks. Bye.